Sports can take many forms and you need different attributes in order to be good at different sports. You have physical sports where you need stamina, endurance and athleticism. Or you can have a sport which is a little bit more competitive, where perhaps you need strategy, patience and endurance. Today we are talking about a particularly strange hybrid sport which takes on board two completely opposite sides of the sporting spectrum, melding them together in one single sport. I am talking of course today about chess boxing. Hello, welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank. And I want you to think for a moment about any two sports that you can slap together and make something completely new out of it, particularly if it's one that is very unexpected. Two completely different sports that you would expect would never go together. I mean, just one as an example, it's not particularly odd by any means, but triathlon, which is basically just three existing sporting events wrapped together into one. However, the one we're talking about today is very unique due to the fact that it is Possibly two completely different sports that you would never assume would ever go together. Chess boxing, as you might imagine, is a competitive game where two athletes duke it out in a hybrid sport of the traditional disciplines of chess and boxing, all at the same time. So, how does it work? The two competitors will alternate rounds between chess and boxing, where they will bounce in short blitz rounds from trying to outwit their opponent in a classic game of chess to beating the living hell out of each other in the ring, back and forth until either there is a checkmate or a straight knockout. And no, you can't get the knockout during the chess part of the tournament. Standard rules dictate that you play a four minute round of chess, then a three minute round of boxing, then returning to a round of chess, and in total the match will consist of 11 rounds, each with a one minute interval between them. So there's not much room to think, or breathe. The normal rules apply to each game, so if there is no decisive winner, you can win either by time penalty as per the chess rules, or if a boxing decision finds in your favour in the event that there's a draw during the chess part of the game. What I find particularly amazing about this is during the boxing parts, yes you are in the ring, but every time it swaps to the chess part, basically that one minute turnaround involves someone bringing out a chess board, putting it in the centre of the ring, and then the actual boxing players have to sit there, have a single glove removed so they can play their rounds of chess. Then, once it's over, the board gets carefully picked up and carried away. The boxing glove goes back on, and then they're ready for the next round. And yes, this game is taken very seriously. So seriously, in fact, that during the chess part of the game, the players have to wear ear defenders to prevent hearing anything from the outside. This will not only prevent cheating in that the audience can't shout commands over to the players, but in addition it also helps them focus. And no, there's not really much need for ear defenders during the boxing part of the game, because the only sounds you're going to be hearing from the audience are screams and cheers when you get laid out on the canvas. The man who is known for inventing the sport is an artist called Enki Bilal. He introduced the concept of chess boxing in some of his comic books in 1992, and since it has grown into a recognised sport we all know and love today. And for many people watching, that sport you just discovered was a thing today. The governing bodies of chess boxing are the World Chess Boxing Association, the WCBA, and the World Chess Boxing Organisation, the WCBO. Of course, each prestigious in their own right, but was established to primarily help train people in the sport. Or sports. I mean, at the end of the day, it's two sports in one, so you take your pick. All I do know from this is that if you can play chess boxing, you must be a pretty well-rounded individual for being fairly competent at both the chess side and the boxing side. To even have a chance to compete in the sport, you need to have a baseline understanding and competency in both aspects of the game. So yes, you can be the captain of the chess team, but if you get into the boxing side and can't hold your own, you're not going to last 10 seconds in there. Unless you're really, really good at chess. To even compete, you need to have a chess rating of 1800 to compete in the sport. Now, I ain't no chess connoisseur, but from what I understand, you have to be at least a semi-professional to have that type of rating. 
So it's not like your average Joe can just pop in there and start playing chess boxing. There is a minimum level requirement here, which means that you have to be pretty good at chess in order to actually get it in play. So particularly for the chess parts, you need to be quite experienced in that you're playing at either a national or international level. So pretty dang good. The reason for this is to try and make the game fair. I mean, at the end of the day, if you just had someone who didn't really understand chess that much, but was a heavyweight boxer and they came in and absolutely laid you out in a few moments, then what's really the point of the chess part? What they want is competitors who are going to be good at both parts of the sport, in order for both to be interesting and also potentially game-changing. Just to demonstrate how seriously this is taken, there are even refs in the chess portion to step in and pressure a player who is suspected of purposefully stalling a losing chess game. What you might have realised, if you have any knowledge of professional chess whatsoever, is that this effectively mimics that of a standard speed chess match. Stall for too long and you're going to find yourself on the losing end of the game. Honestly, this all sounds a little bit crazy. If I was put into the boxing side, I might have a very slim chance of holding my own. The chess side, on the other hand, pff, I'd have no chance. I'm the kind of person that calls a knight a horse, so that should give you a good indication of my skill and knowledge in the game of chess. But the sport sounds like fun and an interesting take on, well, both sports. Maybe one day I'll be an audience member so I can see my very own chess boxing game and to see what it's like from the grit and concentration of chess to then people walloping on each other in the boxing part. Sounds like fun. And of course, all in the name of sportsmanship. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. I really, really want to see more sports get clumped together to create something truly unique. And I can think of two sports off the top of my head which have been longing to be put together. MMA and Quidditch. Guys, guys, hear me out. All I want to see is a wizard doing a roundhouse kick and then pile driving someone into the floor. That sounds like entertainment. <laughs> but you never know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.